tonight we are talking about the converse of Theorem 4.5. This was referred to uh, sort of in passing in the proof of Theorem 4.7, which is what we're really working toward, and uh, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about uh, what would he, what we even mean by the converse of Theorem 4.5, given that Theorem 4.5 is not stated in the, the classical if-then sort of statement. And then I thought we'd go ahead and prove uh, the converse, which is actually not terribly bad to prove. So you recall that Theorem 4.5 said that the internal bisector of an angle of a triangle divides the opposite side into two segments proportional to the sides of the triangle adjacent to the angle. Uh, if we wanted to restate that in terms of an if-then statement, uh, we could say, let ABC be any triangle. Then, uh, if D is a point on BC, then if AD is the internal angle bisector at A, then we get the desired ratio. Then BD over DC is equal to BA over AC. Okay, so we have this point D on the side BC, and so if AD happens to be the internal angle bisector, then these sides have the uh, have the ratio that we want. Okay, and now our uh, previous one of the YouTube videos we discussed uh, extending theorem theorem 4.5 to external bisectors, and really the only change that we had to make here was. Uh, we allowed D to be a point on the line BC, not just the interior of the segment BC, but on any point on the line that contains B and C. Uh, then, if AD is either the internal angle bisector or the external angle bisector, then we get the right ratio. Then we get BD over DC equals BA over AC. And so, the converse, uh, we're actually going to discuss the converse of this extended version uh, and prove that. We're going to say, suppose we pick some point D on the side BC. Um, and it just so happens that the that choice of D is uh, gives us the appropriate ratio. Then that means that our D must have been either on the internal bisector or the external bisector. And uh, we're actually going to use uh, a, a small argument that looks a lot like something that is mentioned in the theorem, in the proof of theorem 4.7. So we're going to suppose we have some triangle ABC, and we are going to let R be this magic ratio uh, BA over AC. Okay, um, <clears throat> and now, um, let's see, if we're looking at the line that contains B and C, okay, uh, in this line, there is exactly one point between B and C such that B, P, To over the ratio of BP to BC is equal to R. Okay, so BP over BC equals R. Okay, there's exactly one point where that happens. Uh, and you can sort of solve, you can solve some equation, you can say, uh, you know, let X be the distance to the right of B, and then, so... Um, let's see, how did that work? Ah, I had this written up in another way before. So you're looking for, uh, you know, X over, yeah, oh, okay, you think of this as the number line, then X minus B, yeah, 
don't call it the distance to the right, just call it the position on it. Think of this as the think of this line as the number line. Then x minus b over c minus x equals r. Okay, you can solve that for x. There's exactly one solution. And similarly, um, there is exactly one point outside. We're going to call it q. Uh, such that the ratio the, of the distance from B to Q from the dis of the distance to Q to C is equal to that fixed ratio R. So you're looking for, in this case, uh, X minus B over X minus C equal to R. And so you solve for X and you figure out how far um, to the right each of these points has to be. Okay. <clears throat> So there are exactly two points where we had achieved this ratio, and those two points are respectively on the internal bisector at A, P is on the internal bisector, and Q is on the external. Bisector at A. So if we pick a point, any point that is not on the internal bisector or the external bisector, then we're getting a point that doesn't satisfy one of these two equations. So we would be getting a point for which the ratio is not what we want. And so that actually gives us the converse. Uh, we're gonna, we proved it by the contrapositive. We supposed that we picked a point that was not... Um, on the internal bisector or the external bisector, and we show that the ratio turns out to be wrong. And that's good enough. That proves our converse. So when we are working on the proof of theorem 4.7, we can invoke the converse of theorem 4.5 in its full glory.